Hey everyone, I'm the Shark Doctor. And on this expedition, I'll be testing out a brand new electromagnetic technology that's designed to protect sharks. It's cutting edge, it's groundbreaking, and it's, it's, it's heavier than I thought. On this expedition, we'll meet some of the most formidable sharks on the planet. Any guesses on what they are? Here's a hint, it's not the land sharks that steal my snacks. You'll have to dive in with me to find out. Are you ready? Let's go. We're starting our expedition off right here in the Bahamas where the water is so incredibly clear that we'll be able to see each and every detail and we'll see some of the most colorful creatures on the planet. Also where I hope to encounter my first target species, the bull shark. The bull shark is an incredibly awesome animal. This shark species can get quite large, with the record being 13 feet 1 inches. This is just under the average length of a car. That's just massive. However, the bull sharks we'll encounter will average around 7 feet in length. Want to know one of the coolest facts about bull sharks? They're one of the very few species of sharks that can actually tolerate and live in fresh water. That's pretty neat, huh? But let's learn why we're really working with bull sharks in the Bahamas. Places like Australia, South Africa, and Reunion Island actually use huge nets and huge hooks as a way to remove large sharks from the ocean. It's so sad and as a result, shark populations in these areas aren't doing well. And this hurts the ocean. You know what? I really want you to understand this, so let's take a look. I have a little surprise for you. This is Charlotte, our first conservation crusader, and she's going to help us understand why sharks are important. Say hi, Charlotte. Hey, everyone. So, Shark Doctor, since you're in the Bahamas, let's think of how losing sharks could impact the ocean. Good idea, and I have the perfect example. Check this out. In a beautiful coral reef, there's life everywhere. Sharks are the top predators that eat groupers. Groupers, what are they? They're a powerful and voracious fish that live amongst the reef that sharks like to eat. Some can be small and some can be absolutely huge, like the Goliath grouper that can be over 800 pounds. Wow, so cool, and some are so beautiful. Now this is a really important step, pay attention. Groupers eat parrotfish, but because of the sharks, there are less groupers and more parrotfish. Now parrotfish are a really important fish that eats algae off of coral. Algae is a marine plant, and excessive growth can harm coral reefs. How could algae hurt coral? Gee whiz, you have some good questions. Now, imagine coral is like a tiny underwater garden. It needs sunlight and clean water to stay healthy and colorful. But sometimes, algae, which are like slimy green plants, start growing too much. The algae can cover the coral, blocking the sunlight. Without sunlight, 
but coral can't get the energy it needs to grow and stay strong. It's like if someone put a big blanket over a flower. It wouldn't get enough sunlight to survive. Make sense? Wow, yes, so amazing. Check this out. A coral reef with sharks, groupers, parrotfish, and corals. Well, is this healthy or unhealthy? Duh, healthy. Correct. Now, let's remove the sharks and see what happens. Uh-oh, I'm afraid to find out. After a few years of no sharks, there are a lot more groupers because the sharks aren't there to feed on them. Oh no, now the groupers are eating all the parrotfish. Oh no, even worse, the parrotfish are gone so the algae is growing over all the coral. And oh no, the coral reef will disappear. So what this means is we need sharks and we need every little and big marine creature to keep the ocean healthy. Yes, you're correct, Charlotte. Good work. So as you can see, sharks are so important, as is everything else in the ocean. So we must do everything in our power to protect it. Well, how are we going to protect these sharks in Australia, South Africa, and Reunion Island? Well, Charlotte, let's take a look. This is the shark exclusion barrier. And I gotta say, it's pretty incredible. Pretty much, it's a series of pipes that creates a no sharks allowed zone. The sharks see the pipes and they say, we're gonna swim somewhere else. But to be honest, the real magic is what's inside. Inside these pipes are powerful electromagnets that give sharks a little zap. Now, this doesn't hurt the sharks, but there's enough power there for sharks to say, I'm out of here. But the real amazing thing about these magnets is that they don't visibly affect animals like dolphins, sea turtles, or other fish. Why do sharks feel it though? It's all thanks to tiny, super sensitive pores around their snouts called the Epulae of Lorenzini. When they get too close to these extremely powerful magnets, the sharks sense them with their ampullae and it feels super weird. So they turn around and swim away. Of course, we gotta put this thing in the water and see if it truly works. And if it does, it's gonna be an eco-friendly, an ocean-friendly way to keep sharks out of an area. And it's gonna be the perfect replacement for harmful nets and hooks. All right, guys, we already learned so much on this expedition. But before we get to the big moment of deploying the barrier, there's still one more super exciting step. And that's figuring out how many bull sharks are in the area. Here's a problem. I don't necessarily know where to find these bull sharks. So we're gonna speak to one of their favorite prey items, the Southern Stingray. And I know the perfect spot to find them. This is Honeymoon Harbor one of the most beautiful little protected areas in the Bahamas and also a place Southern Stingrays call home. I have my gear ready, so it's time to get to work. Let's dive in and let's talk to these rays. Hi, Stingray. My name is actually Pancake. Oh, whoops. Hi, Pancake. Look, I know you're busy, but I had a quick question for you. Go ahead. Well, I'm here to test out a new conservation technology and I need to find a bunch of bull sharks to test it on. Do you have any idea where I can go? Blech. You're slimy. Oh, sheesh. Well, definitely not here. There are some bull sharks in the deeper water out there. But if you want your best chance of seeing some, head to North Bimini! Hey, here's a cool fact that will help you with your project. Bull sharks are corpuscular. Do you know what that means? Muscular? Yeah, I know they're muscular. No, no, no! Corpuscular! Oh, no, I never heard of that before. 
So if you do your work later in the day, or super early in the morning, you'll have the most luck. Thank you. Catch you on the flip side, Pancake. Get it? Oh boy, just get out of here. I tell you what, that was some dive. Look, we got amazing intel from Pancake. So we're gonna head to North Bimini and we're gonna get started. Upon pulling up to North Bimini, it looks like I found the perfect spot. There's sharks everywhere. We need to figure out how many bull sharks are hanging around to see if it's worth setting up my experiment here. I'm gonna suit up and jump in. The water's super warm here. What's that? It's a bull! It's a bull! Wow, it's huge! Here's another! And another! And another! They're everywhere! Whoa, it's eating right in front of me! Okay, photo time! Got it! These animals are so beautiful! Whoa! This one's trying to get in the cage! Perfect! I just got three more sharks! Another! And another! Wow, this is incredible! There's so many sharks, I've lost count! It's the perfect spot! Pancake was right! Pancake! I love you! Running low on air, dive is done, time to get out. I think we successfully surveyed the sharks. That was one of the best dives of my life. I was completely surrounded by bull sharks the entire time. They're still behind me right now. I gotta analyze the data and see how many bull sharks are really here. I was able to identify 12 different bull sharks. They all have their own unique characteristics. So I gave them all nicknames. This is Spotzilla, has spots all over its body. This is Curly, has a curly dorsal fin. And this one was the smallest out of the group. This is Tiny. Now I also nicknamed the rest. You have Plumpy, Stumpy, Chunk Norris, Shark Vader, Beefy McBiteface, Chunkopotamus, McMeathead, Vin Diesel, and Dumpy. Now, we just need them all to interact with the shark exclusion barrier. And if they do, our data will be that much stronger. It's a new day, and we know we have the perfect spot to do our experiment. So, it's time to get suited up so we can see if this technology is really effective. And guess what? To do this, I'm not using a cage. That means I'm gonna be deploying this barrier with all the bull sharks around me. So let's go. Ah, shark, 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 look at this. Wow, it's about eight feet long. Ah, oh, sheesh. All right, I gotta focus here. I have to deploy about a hundred pipes with my safety diver and close off this entire harbor to see if this barrier really works. Wow, this is tough. Lots of pipes. I just have to clip it on the chain. Okay, just a few more. Wow, look at these sharks. They're huge. Here comes another shark! It's checking out to see what we're doing to its home. Okay, all done. Now for the fun part. We have a bunch of bait in this box right here. And what we're gonna do is put all this bait on the other side of the barrier to try and lure the bull sharks through. 
Now, if the bull sharks don't swim through with the delicious meal on the other side, it means this barrier is truly effective. All right, here we go. Let's start this experiment. Hey, where are all the sharks? I'm not kidding, where are the sharks? Oh no, if the sharks don't show up, we can't test the barrier. I don't get it. I put all this bait in and nothing, no sharks. Guys, all this work and potentially no results. I'm trying to stay positive, but I don't see anything. Wait, wait, here they come. Look at this one. Look at this, it's coming in. Whoa, a turn away. Yes. Zach, the magnets got him. Ah, a bunch are coming at once. Is it gonna work? Yes, woohoo! I can see them all on the other side of the barrier. They definitely smell the bait. I'm a bit nervous, but if this keeps working, we're one step closer to protecting sharks. There's so many sharks out there right now. They're swimming towards the surface, hoping there's a gap, but they can't find one. All blocked by the barrier. I feel totally safe on this side of the barrier with all this bait. It's unbelievable. Even cooler, look at all these fish swimming right through. It's the perfect solution to those harmful nets and hooks. Woohoo! I can't be happier right now. I'm running out of air, time to get out. But hard work always pays off. How incredible is this? Multiple days of studying the barrier and it's been a huge success. Each and every bull shark, including Finn Diesel, was deterred by the barrier. So it worked. Look, we're not done. In the next episode, we're taking our barrier from the crystal clear warm waters of the Bahamas to the murky and cool waters of Cape Cod, where the barrier is gonna face off with the most notorious shark species on the planet, the great white shark. If the barrier works there, we'll have the solution and the harmful nets and hooks will be a thing of the past. So let's go, let's get to work. Until next time, keep exploring, keep protecting, and keep loving the wild world around us.